Section 72 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pamela Krantz. Women of History by Anonymous. Anna Seward. Born 1747, died 1809. Sir Walter Scott. This poetical lady was born in 1747. Her father, the Reverend Thomas Seward, rector of Higham in Derbyshire, prebendary of Salisbury, and canon residentiary of Lichfield, was himself a poet, and a manuscript collection of his fugitive pieces is now lying before me, the bequest of my honoured friend, when she entrusted me with the task which I am now endeavouring to discharge. Several of these effusions were printed in Dodsley's collection. Thus accomplished himself, the talents of his eldest daughter did not long escape his complacent observation. In 1754 Mr. Seward removed with his family to Lichfield. The classical pretensions of this city were exalted by its being the residence of Dr. Darwin, who soon distinguished and appreciated the talents of our young poetess. At this time, however, literature was deemed an undesirable pursuit for a young lady in Miss Seward's situation. The heiress of an independent fortune and destined to occupy a considerable rank in society. Her mother, although an excellent woman, possessed no taste for her daughter's favorite amusements, and even Mr. Seward withdrew his countenance from them, probably under the apprehension that his continued encouragement might produce in his daughter that dreaded phenomenon, a learned lady. After the death of Miss Sarah Seward, her sister's society became indispensable to her parents, and she was never separated from them. Offers of matrimonial establishments occurred, and were rejected in one instance entirely, and in others chiefly from a sense of filial duty. As she was now of an age to select her own society and studies, Miss Seward's love for literature was indulged, and the sphere in which she moved was such as to increase her tastes for its pursuits. Dr. Darwin, Mr. Day, whose opinions formed singular specimens of English philosophy, Mr. Edgeworth, Sir Brooke Boothby, and other names well known in the literary world, then formed part of the Litchfield Society. The celebrated Dr. Johnson was an occasional visitor of their circles, but he seems, in some respects, to have shared the fate of a prophet in his own country. Neither Dr. Darwin nor Miss Seward were partial to the great moralist. There was perhaps some aristocratic prejudice in their dislike, for the despotic manners of Dr. Johnson were least likely to be tolerated, where the lowness of his origin was in fresh recollection. At the same time, Miss Seward was always willing to do justice to his native benevolence, and to the powerful grasp of his intellectual powers, and she possessed many anecdotes of his conversation which had escaped his most vigilant recorders. These she used to tell with great humor, and with a very striking imitation of the sage's peculiar voice, gesture, and manner of delivery. Miss Seward, when young, must have been exquisitely beautiful, for in advanced age the regularity of her features, the fire and expression of her countenance, gave her the appearance of beauty, and almost of youth. Her eyes were auburn, of the precise shade and hue of her hair, and possessed great expression in reciting or speaking with animation they appeared to become darker and as it were to flash fire i should have hesitated to state the impression which the peculiarity made upon me at the time had not my observation been confirmed by that of the first actress of this or any other age with whom i lately happened to converse on our deceased friend's expressive powers of countenance miss seward's tone of voice was melodious guided by excellent taste and well suited to reading and recitation, in which she willingly exercised. She did not sing, nor was she a great proficient in music, though very fond of it, having studied it later in life than is now usual. Her stature was tall, and her form was originally elegant, but having broken the patella of her knee by a fall in the year of 1768, she walked with pain and difficulty, which increased with the pressure of years. In 1784, Miss Seward produced a poetical novel, entitled Louisa, 
which became popular and passed through several editions. Her memoirs of the life of Dr. Darwin was her last composition. In this she lays claim to the lines at the commencement of The Botanic Garden, though unacknowledged by the author. Her other poems are Langolin Vale, a volume of sonnets, and some paraphrases of Horace. She died in March 1809, leaving Sir Walter Scott her literary executor. Mr. Polwheel, in his Unsexed Females, speaks thus. Miss Seward's poems are thoughts that breathe and words that burn. End of Anna Seward Recording by Pamela Krantz